You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everybody, to more of the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Hrsadulu, and today on this June 23rd, 2022, we are breaking down the USFL playoffs round number one. We have in the early window at 3 p.m. Eastern time this Saturday, the Philadelphia Stars taking on the New Jersey Generals, and then later on that evening in prime time at 8 p.m. Eastern time, the New Orleans Breakers go up against the Birmingham Stallions for the South Division. It's going to be an interesting couple of games with, honestly, opportunity for both teams to potentially pick up a win and move on to the second round and championship game next weekend. So make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most importantly, comment down below. Let me know who you guys think is going to come out winners in this weekend's slate of games. But we'll start things off with the early window here, beginning with the Generals and the Stars going head-to-head for the North. This is an interesting one because it's been a very tight-knit matchup between these two, both games being decided by a possession or less, where the most recent game ended 26-23 to in favor of the Generals, who were able to intercept a pass on, the, on their own seven-yard line as the Stars were driving late in the game, trying to steal a victory and even up the series one and one. But ultimately, Generals D did what they did best pretty much all year long, and that was be you know, a sound, effective unit in making a play when it needed to be made to secure a victory. Now, Generals have won both meetings. Like I said, they won just this past week. They also won back in week number three, 24 to 16. Game was a little bit further apart, but still a one possession game nonetheless. Despite that, I do feel that the Generals, or not, excuse me, not the Generals, the Stars do have an opportunity to potentially steal a victory in this game. The Generals are only considered minus four and a half favorites here. The over-under sitting at 47 and a half. And I think that when you look at just some of the betting odds and the way things look, it's it's clear that people feel that, you know, the Stars maybe have somewhat of a chance. You know, minus four and a half is not a massive window for the Generals in this game. And, you know, again, despite the fact that they've won both, it was literally, you know, a, a bad pass away from it being a Stars victory the last time these two teams met, and I think the game ends up being a lot, or considered to be a lot closer than what we're looking at right now. When you look at the keys to success for both of these teams here, uh, both of them specifically struggle against the pass. Both of them allowed near 200 yards per game through the air throughout the entirety of the season. So whichever team is able to take advantage of that through the air, which just in this most recent meeting, both teams didn't really have much of a problem throwing the football, you know, I think will ultimately be a key to them potentially pulling out a victory here. But more specifically for the Stars, they need to make sure that their attack is balanced. While the Generals pass D is not necessarily the best and theirs the same, they knew that I think that the Stars offense is definitely the most effective when not only are they able to move the football through the air in case Cookus is doing his thing because he he's passed the ball really well since taking over for Brian Scott. The running game, Matt Colburn. He has emerged, and he's shown flashes early in the season before the Stars really started to commit to that run game. And I think that if they can just pound the rock, you know, we're looking at like 110 plus yards or so with maybe a touchdown from Colburn. And Case Cookus, you know, plays a good clean game with like 150, 160, near 200 yards and a touchdown or two, just playing good sound football, not turning the ball over. The Stars have a legitimate shot of winning this game. Now, when you look at what the Generals do on offense, They need to look and establish the run game and establish it early on. You go up against the Stars team that is the literal league's worst in yards allowed per game. Just last week, they clearly identified that because they managed 25 carries, 178 yards, and a touchdown. The Generals moving the ball on the ground like they have all year long, coupled with just how well Luis Perez was able to take advantage of a Stars defense that's not necessarily great at defending the pass either. That is a recipe for success, at least offensively, but really it'll boil down to this general's defense and being able to make a stop when it matters most like they did last week. Both of these defenses, again, allow a ton of yards. The generals I do give a slight edge to because they do come up in bigger spots than the Philadelphia Stars defense does, but ultimately I I think that it's going to come down to who plays a cleaner offense and then also, again, can 
Case Cookus, avoid the game-ending interception again this time? Or for the Generals, can the defense make things difficult for Case Cookus, who has lit up some defenses this year and put together some of the best performances all season long by any quarterback in the league and bring the pressure that they've lacked all season long? They are eighth in sacks with only 10, and that's probably been the one criticism I've had of this Generals defense all year long. They've played sound, they've played well, they've made plays when needed, but they don't really bring a ton of pressure. And Case Cookus was wheeling and dealing last week up until that final drive. So when you look at keys to success here, whose defense is going to be able to step up and make a play? Which defense is going to be able to bring pressure and disrupt the other quarterback? Because when you look at the way the game shook out last week, both offenses were pretty much doing all they wanted all game long. It just ultimately ended for the Stars in one bad play at the end of the game. So realistically, both offenses, they need to come in, they need to play clean, Sound football, balanced attacks for both, and both teams are capable of all of those things. I really think defensively, it's going to come down to who makes the big play when it matters most to ultimately edge the other team out. As for picking a victor in this game and who is going to represent the North next weekend, you know, it's a toss up. It's close. It really is. You know, the Generals are minus four and a half favorites in this game, and, you know, there, I think that there's a good opportunity that the Stars can even pull out an upset in this one. However, the Generals have won nine straight games for a reason. Their only loss coming in a tight, contested matchup against the Stallions all the way back in week one. And as much as I would like the Stars, who are a team that I picked as a dark horse to make the playoffs all the way back in like week five... As much as I would love for them to do a kind of Cinderella run and make it to the, you know, to the end of the season playing for a championship... I think I'm going to go with the Generals on this one here. And I think the Generals just barely edge them out. I think it's another close one. I have the Generals winning 27 to 24. I like the over for this game. The over sitting at 47 and a half with both teams totaling out to about 51 points altogether when the all is said and done. I just think the Generals have a slight edge over the Stars. Again, they've beaten them twice already, and it is very hard in football to sweep a team three times. You see it in the NFL all all the time. Divisional opponents, you know, they play each other during the season. I think a really good recent example of that is the Saints and the way they have dominated the Buccaneers in the regular season, but yet the Buccaneers have been able to take down the Saints in the playoffs. I think... You know, it's hard to beat a team three times, but this Generals team is so well coached. Mike Riley just won coach of the year, and there's just so many playmakers on offense, and the defense just seems to come up and get the job done when it needs to be. I have a hard time picking against the Generals. I really do. I like the Generals in this matchup. I think that they are a slightly better team than the Stars, but do I think the Stars have an opportunity to pull out an upset? Absolutely. I would not be surprised if the Stars, you know, squeak out a two point or a one point victory late in the game or, you know, they finish the drive they couldn't finish last week and get the W this time around. I, I It would not surprise me in the slightest, but I do like the Generals going into this game. I think it is going to be a tight contest for sure. And then looking at the second matchup again, this is the primetime matchup for the South Division here. The Breakers at 6-4, and four, the Stallions at 9-1. and one. The Stallions were essentially the USFL darlings all season long, and then kind of things started to slip up late. They were 8-0, and oh, they lost to the Gamblers, they won the final game of the season, but in their like last three games, the I would say, I don't know if I would really count the last game though, because they looked pretty solid offensively in the last game, but the offense... I would say the last three weeks or so of the season, not quite the offense we were seeing during the earlier portions of the year. They kind of slowed down a bit, and that you know that Gamblers game was a bit concerning. And and you know when I was going through my power rankings, I ended up dropping the Stallions to to number two. And I am slightly concerned about the offense over there for the for I almost call them the Maulers, the Birmingham Stallions. Excuse me. The Stallions are minus five favorites in this one. Over under sitting at forty four and a half. I think the Stallions being favored, rightfully so. I don't know if I like minus five, though, because the last time these two teams met, Stallions won 10-9, to and it was essentially just a complete lack of any sort of ability to move the football or do anything on offense that the Breakers were not able to get the victory in that second matchup when they played back in Week 8. Obviously, Week 3, a little bit of a different story. The Stallions were rolling 22-13, to big victory there. It was never really a close one, but... I think that 
this game's going to end up being closer than five points. I, I feel like it's going to be a tight one. And I don't know if I would like betting on the spread going into this one here. I will say that the Breakers, they found success in that game too. Like I mentioned defensively, it really boils down to can their offense get the job done in this game here? At least like, at, like when you're just looking in the scope of things, the offense, for whatever reason, has really struggled against this Birmingham defense. And if their offense cannot find momentum in this game, it's going to be a problem for them. And they will not be able to come out of this game victors. When I look at the keys of success, uh, keys to success for both of these teams, they were both tops in points allowed. The Breakers allowed only 148 points on the season, whereas the Stallions at 161, first and second respectively. Both of these teams do not allow a ton of scoring, and that was reflected in the in the most recent game they played. Again, scoreline was 10 to 9. Defense was really coming on strong late in the year. I will say though, if there is an edge for the Stallions, it's going to be that pass rush, and that is part of the reason why the Breakers have had a really hard time against them. The Stallions are the number 1 team in sacks forced in the USFL. They had 27 on the season, almost 30 sacks in a 10-game season. They're nearing almost three sacks a game. Ridiculous numbers, to say the least. 2.7 would be the average there. But, you know, it, as far as matching up against uh, an offensive line with the New Orleans Breakers that, you know, has had some good games, had some bad games, that is going to be an issue for New Orleans and something they're going to need to overcome if they want to win this game here. And, and, for, the, and for the Stallions, a team that you know, has been a very balanced attack. They've had some, you know, heart, heart attack wins here and there throughout the entirety of the season. They do have a tall order going up against this Breakers defense, who by the end of the year formed themselves into the number one team in pa against the pass in passing yards allowed with only 164 per game, which is, is a little bit of a concern when you're the Stallions considering how up and down Jamar Smith has been during certain stretches of the season. He's had games where he's looked really good. He's had games where he's completing sub 50% of his passes and barely moving the ball at all. But, you know, thankfully the defense has been so good, they've been able to win games. So Breakers D, especially the passing side of things, could be a problem. The pass rush of the Stallions, if they're swinging and just teeing off on Kyle Sloter, who has been banged up all year long, you know, those are two things that I'll really be watching throughout the entirety of this game that I think will be very big factors in how this game plays out. As for what is going to win each team this game here, when I look at the Breakers specifically, it is going to be, and honestly for both teams, really, both of these teams, I guess you could say, are going to really live and die on their quarterback play in this one here. Kyle Sloter needs to have a clean game, and more specifically, throwing the football. He finished the season off with 11 interceptions, and he's had some really ugly games of like two and three interception games, I'm talking. He finished with 11 interceptions on the season. That was second most, only behind Jordan Te'amu. He needs to play clean, and that's not even accounting for the fumbles that he had this year. I believe he had six or seven, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't write that number down, but that was another number I forgot to go and pull for this. He did have like six or seven fumbles as well. Sloter needs to protect the football if he wants to lead this Breakers team to the South Division Championship and also into the finals game next week. It Really, this offense lives and dies on Sloter's play. I, I firmly believe that if he's throwing two or three interceptions against this Birmingham Stallions defense, I really do not have any hope for this one here for the Breakers. And I could say the same exact thing for the way I look at the Stallions here. When you consider how... The Breakers have had a few bad games here or there, don't get me wrong, but they've been a fairly consistent offense that's put up some pretty good numbers throughout the entirety of the year. They need to make sure that Jamar Smith is having one of his like near 70% completion games and not one of his below 50% completion percentage games. There have been some games this year where Jamar Smith has been so up and down, some where he's been awesome and some where he has just been downright awful throwing the football. He has been very hot and cold and, and like and sometimes in the middle. We need to see the Jamar Smith who can put up, you know, 50, 60, 70 yards on the ground, 150 to near 200 yards through the air. You know, he's totaling for two or three touchdowns. His total yardage sits somewhere around like 250 yards altogether. That is the Jamar Smith that the Stallions need to see going into this game if they want to come out winners here. I do not think that if Jamar Smith has another bad game as, as the quarterback and, you know, the breakers come in, 
I, they were it was 10 to 9 the last time these two teams played all the breakers he needed to do was find even the slightest bit of competence on offense and that game swings the breakers way if the breakers can come in and even score you know 17 to 20 points and jmar smith's having one of those nights where he's sub 50 percent completion or he's just like teetering on that number there i don't really know if if the stallions can come out winners in this one here there has been some offensive concerns the last few weeks they kind of rectified it a little bit in this final game of the season that they just had this past week and hopefully that can carry over into this next week so we get a good game offensively from both of these teams but that will be something I'm keeping an eye on for both of these teams is just how well both of these quarterbacks who have had some really high highs and some really low lows play in, in, an, in an opportunity for a championship on the line. But as for my winner and who I think is going to come out the victor in this game here, like I said, I think this one's going to be closer than that five point spread that they have there. I'm a little bit concerned about both teams' ability to move the ball on offense here, and I do think that it ends up being a more defensive standoff than anything. I don't expect this game to be a massively high-scoring game, but I expect a few touchdowns here and there. Ultimately, though, and and as a Breakers fan, it hurts me to say this, but I am going with the Stallions here, and I'm going to have them win a tight one. I have them winning 21-19, to and so I'm going with the under on this one here. The under's at 44-and-a-half. And I have them just at 40 for the points uh, when all said is done for this game. Again, I think it's going to be more of a defensive standoff. I see both of these teams struggling. The part of the Stallions 21, I could even see being like a defensive touchdown or something like that. I, I just think that both of these teams, the two times they've met, have really struggled to put up a ton of points. Again, the first game, 22 to 13. The last game they played, 10 to 9. I think this one ends up being a little bit more of a defensive standoff here. The offenses have been a little bit up and down as of late, and I think the Stallions edge out this one. And again, I like the under for this one. I just feel like it ends up being a little bit more of a lower scoring affair and more of a gritty, grinded out type of game. But that is my picks for the two playoff games we have this week. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below, my USFL fans. Who is representing the North and the South in next week's championship game? Please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. That is it for me. I appreciate you all for watching. I will catch you all in the next video. Have a good one.